Ethereal by Sidney Mershon. The sky is dark and clear, waiting in anticipation for the northern lights to begin. I walk in circles around the rim of the clock tower, clicking my fingernails against each other as I search for another way down. The ground looks so far away from up here. When I lean over the edge, the knot of snakes in my stomach only grows. Why did he do this to me? My only opportunity was dangling right before my hands, coaxing me to grab it. I glare malevolently at the trap door leading to the stairs in my escape. I take a deep breath and tentatively reach out my pale, quivering hand. Slowly I wrap my fingers around its cracked handle. Pull. Black fire throws me back through the air. For a second I'm weightless, floating, my dress billowing around me in the air before hitting the silver bell with a loud clang that sends curses through my head. The pain is instant, coils of it flowing through my back, turning it into the mocking dark mist that now dances around the walls. I can almost hear his voice in that black, laughing a laugh that smells like sulfur and sounds like cold. When the pain subsides, I stand and quick, quickly look around, hoping I still have time. The stars outside wait for their dance, just a little longer. I ground myself and grab hold of my senses, fighting through the insisting dread that screams trapped, feeling the night air as it pushes against my skin. I hold on to the sound of my own breathing and fill the room with iridescent sparks of my magic. The black tinted mist coils and slithers around the corner of the walls, twisting the pain in my back. My power meets its hatred and the wretched mist is quickly engulfed and dispelled. I should have realized how strong the spell in the door would be. I look down the edge of the sixty-foot-high walls for the hundredth time, not daring to risk touching them for fear the spell he has cast on them is stronger yet. I know my light cannot help me further. I'm messing this up. I can feel the edges of my mind blurring. I may never see the iridescence again. I will never be able to use my wings or my magic again or see those I love. I will become ordinary, plain, dull, and hopeless against the earth's motley of color colors. My urges will come back, and there will be no way out this time. I will steal. I will lose all control. There will be no light or reason to stop me. I will take all I can possibly take, and my only recollection will be the wondering of why someone would leave their light where I could so easily snatch it and carry it back to that dark place within myself. No, I cannot go back there. I try to ignore my head-spinning nerves and hold on to the fact that I can get out of here. I can beat him. I scramble around the edges of the clock tower again and grab my discarded satchel. I root through its contents, feeling my stomach seize up again as I sort through the, through the useless, crinkled context, content, contents of my urge pouch, tossing it aside along with a book and a paralyzed crow. I lose my patience and turn my satchel upside down to shake out whatever remains, wincing as a few past stolen items hit the marbled and cracked floor. There, I practically feel my silver eyes light up as I see what I was looking for the beautiful pink and blue Hawaiian breeze scented hand sanitizer. I dash over to the edge of the clock tower again and grip my hand sanitizer hopefully. I hear the familiar clippity clop clippity clop of hooves on the cobblestone below, looking down to see a lone rider trotting atop a beautiful horse. The rider is dressed in royal clothes and the horse is fi in fine tailored tack, so it is the stressed and unquiet reins resting against the horse's neck that hold my eyes. The thre frantic threads are teased by the wind. I tear myself away from the mundane rider, puzzling over the fact that the rest of the world is still functioning. I fumble nervously with a plastic cap on the sanitizer and begin covering all visible areas of my skin with it. None but the other light bearers and I know it, but Hawaiian Breeze scented hand sanitizer defeats all dark mist magic when the dark magic is being used as a barrier against marble stone. This tower is marble stone. I take one last shaky breath and unfold my wings. I hope desperately that I am not mistaken and climb over to the edge of the rim. I loosen my light, soft feathered wings and jump. I slide down the walls of the tower, my anx anxiety melting away as I realize the hand sanitizer worked. My wings catch the cold night breeze and lift me up. I have defeated him. The northern lights begin to dance, turning the stars' egmatic shades of purple and greens. In this moment, I am ethereal.